so, this video wasn't supposed to be so long, I was gonna go for the normal length of a lyric prank or texting story video, but I had so many ideas and the writer in me was going crazy. So, this is the outcome. The burning wood crackled and popped in the library's fireplace, filling the silence as Melissa and Satan sat quietly in the two armchairs beside each other. They've been like this for a little over an hour, enjoying each other's company as they read their books. Satan sipped at his tea, glancing over at Melissa as she flipped the page in her book. He couldn't help but beam as he finally found someone to share his reading sessions with. Of course, it was nice to talk for hours and hours about authors and books, but it was especially nice to sit in silence for hours while reading. If Satan could, he could have this moment go on for an eternity. And that's where the peace and quiet ended. <coughs> Melly Bean. Asmodeus shouted, startling both Melissa and Satan. Satan almost spilling his tea all over himself. The doors to the library slammed open, and in came Asmodeus, quickly skipping inside the large room filled with books. The sight of him dancing his way to a bewildered Melissa made Satan sigh. Could you come in a little quieter? Satan asked. This is a library, after all. Well, it can't be helped. Asmodeus said as he struck a cute pose. With someone as beautiful as me, my presence must be announced in every room I walk in. Satan rolled his eyes. Right. Hey, Asmo. Melissa said, her eyes glued nah. to her book. Melly Bean, guess what? Asmodeus sang, leaning down to Melissa. He puckered his lips to welcome a kiss from the quiet girl but was only shot down when she completely ignored him and looked down at her book. What do you want? She asked. Well. He sang, taking her book from her hands and sitting on her lap. Melissa let out a groan as his weight was placed upon her legs. I heard that Diavolo gave you orders to take a break. Melissa sighed. Yes, he did. Okay. So, let's have some fun. He chuckled, hugging her. It's best friend forever's night at my favorite nightclub. So, I thought you and I could go and have some fun. We could dance the night away, drink good alcohol, or even find someone to hook up with. <sighs> and why would she want to do something like that? Satan sighed. She's having a nice time relaxing with me. Asmodeus sucked his teeth, looking over at the blonde demon. Don't hug her. Besides, I sure she would rather go out than read some dusty old book. Right, Melly Bean. Satan let out a sigh and went to decline against his assumption but was shocked when Melissa began to speak up. She hummed as she thought about Asmodeus' offer, tapping her chin as the lustful demon rocked in her lap. It sounds fun. She said as she looked off into the fire in the fireplace. Ha! Huh? Really? Satan asked with wide eyes. But, I kind of not mentally prepared to be around people. Melissa added, pushing Asmodeus off of her. Why should I leave my comfy spot to go out partying with you, of all people? W what do you mean with me of all people? Asmodeus said with a frown. Well, out of all the brothers, I'm pretty sure parties with you would lead to me getting involved in some kind of orgy or with me agreeing to be someone submissive. Submissive? Mm. I don't take you as one. Asmodeus said, grabbing the book before Melissa could reach it. Once he took it away from her, she let out a sigh and sat back in the chair. And orgies aren't until Wednesday. Melissa rolled her eyes, unamused by what she was just told. Look, best friend forever's night does have a bit of intermingling, but I will make sure to protect you if anyone comes at you when you don't want them to. Asmodeus promised with his hand over his heart. He then grabbed Melissa by the hands and pulled her out of the chair, urging her to leave the library with him. Oi, why, why? Satan called to them, getting up from his chair. You can't just force her to go somewhere. Asmodeus pouted. But, I want to spend time with Melly. You've had her for hours now. Well, our reading sessions usually take that long. 
So now, leave her alone and go clubbing by yourself. Lucifer wouldn't approve of Melissa going out at night anyway. Satan said. Well. Melissa began to say. As long as you promise to watch over me, Asmo, I guess it's fine. Ha. Huh. Satan said as Asmodeus began to jump around happily. Wait. But doesn't Mammon have to go with you? Ayan what about our reading session? Mammon and I are still fighting, remember? Besides, if I went anywhere with that cotton ball, I bet he'll try to get me killed. Melissa huffed not liking that the subject had gone to Mammon. And we could have a reading session tomorrow. All right. Let's go. Asmodeus shouted, hooking his arm with Melissa and dragging her out of the library. Satan let out a sigh and sat back down in his seat. He sat there for a moment, staring over at the other armchair, its emptiness getting to him. It shouldn't be, he shouldn't be feeling this way, so he decided to not dwell on Melissa's absence and look forward to tomorrow. Satan adjusted his book on his lap and continued to read, the crackling and popping of the fire consuming the silence. Asmodeus is online. Uh, so. Melly is drunk. Lucifer is online. What? Satan is online. I told you not to take her clubbing. Look, I didn't think she was the wild type. She was the life of the party. She was dancing and singing on stage. Leviathan is online. Oh, so she's with you. I was wondering why she didn't show up for dinner. I didn't think you were concerned about her whereabouts, Levi. So I only told Beale and Lucifer that she and Esmo went out clubbing. Oh, no. I don't care where she goes. She was supposed to be meeting me for an important business offer. Asmo, how did you let this happen? I trusted that you'd be responsible enough not to let things get out of hand. Well, everything was going fine, but then we started taking shots, and I forgot that devildom alcohol is stronger than the human worlds. Before I knew it, she was stumbling all over the place. How much did she drink? Uh huh, like 8 shots. Beelzebub is online. Is Mel okay? She's a bit out of it. But she's been flipping from being quiet and distant to very chatty and touchy. Touchy. Yeah, she tried to get me to kiss her earlier. You better not have. Excuse me? What do you take me for? I would never take advantage of someone when they're drunk out of their minds. Good. Now, where are you? We're almost home. It's hard because she's all over the place. It would be nice if someone could meet us and help me out. At Mammon. Mammon is online. Yo. Help Esmo. Sorry, but no can do. I'm kind of on strike. On strike? Yup. On strike for being bossed around and being forced to look after that dumb human. And what's everyone so worried about? She needs a little fun in her life. Maybe if we're lucky, she could bump her head on something and start acting like a better person. Says you. Stop being so mean to Mel. You don't understand how she feels when you talk to her like that. How do I try to get along with someone who doesn't want anything to do with me? Melissa asked, staring down at the bag of chips that Beelzebub gave to her. At the same time, he chows down on everything else in the refrigerator. They sat on the cold stone floor, eating. Melissa had only come in and joined him after having a nightmare. She thought it was the usual not being able to sleep a night for her, but then Melissa found herself thinking about the relationship she had with Mammon. It bothered her that she couldn't stand him. All he does is complain and blame me for being here. Like I chose to be here. Melissa pouted, digging her hand in the bag to take out a chip that was blood red. She examined it for a moment and then read the bag. Blood bat chips didn't sound too appetizing, 
so she tapped Beelzebub and handed it to him. He gladly took it out of her hands and ate them. But, do I even try? He doesn't like me, and he made that clear as soon as we met. Melissa sighed, propping her head up with her hand. It sucks that he calls me all types of names. And I know I do the same to him, but I won't let him call me out of my name. And though he's a big, stupid Q-tip, his words get to me sometimes. She shook her head, thinking about her situation more before looking over to Beelzebub, who was busy eating. Melissa, sure he wasn't listening, but she didn't mind. It was healthy to talk about the things that bothered her and finding positive solutions to them. Thanks for listening, Beal. Melissa whispered. Just don't tell Mammon. Okay. After not receiving an answer, Melissa wished him a good night and headed back to her room to get some sleep. Beelzebub looked where she had disappeared when she left the kitchen, sighing as he thought about what Melissa shared with him. Whoa, Beal. What the hell are you talking about, bro? Dot dot dot. I said too much, I promised Mel I wouldn't tell you. Tell me what? Mammon, it is your responsibility to look after Caldwell, because I told you to. Now, help Asmo with her or suffer the consequences of disobeying my orders. Fine. Fine. I'm heading out right now. Jeez. So much for that strike. Melissa is online. Tanny. Mel. Tanny, I'm sorry I left our reading session today. Wait. Are you talking about our reading session today? Wait. Did you just call him Tanny? Levi. I really wanted to stay and read that book. It was so good. What? I don't understand what she's saying. Asmo take her phone away from her. I tried, but she started crying. Oh boohoo. Whatever. Just tell me where you are. We're at the intersection outside of the fall. Damn, that far? Shut up, cotton ball. You shut up, pipsqueak. Not this again. Could you two not argue this time? I thought you said it was funny when they did. It's annoying too. It's kind of cringe that Mammon can't come up with comebacks to Mel's roasts. Right? Mammon's vocabulary doesn't compare to Melly Beans. Hey. Are you saying it's not? Well, whatever. Hey. Stop mocking me. I want to feel good. Feel good. I want you to go down on me and make me feel good. Caldwell, you are intoxicated. Do not send these lewd requests in the chat. You know what she's saying? The club was playing a song, and it was so nice. It was like... What is she talking about, Asmo? She's talking about the song she was singing on stage at the club. I'm so mad I wasn't able to get it on video. She did so great. I said I was on my way, didn't I? Damn, why is she still a pain in my ass when she's drunk? She's not talking to you mammon. She's still singing. Alright, we get it. You like that song. You can't even type out the lyrics with your drunk self. We don't understand what you're saying. Melissa, we don't understand what you're saying. I want you to eat me. Okay. Eat you. I promised I wouldn't do that. What? Uh, that's not the eating that she meant, Beal. 
stop this now, Caldwell. But I don't want to stop daddy. What? What the fu- Uh. Did she? Just call you daddy? She. It would be better if she said this sober. Mammon, are you close by? I'm almost there. Want someone to go down on her. How cute. Eh. What is this song about? Why are these chats always ending up with Caldwell being lewd? I like it. voice. She sounds like an angel. I could hear her from here. Damn loud mouth. What's the name of the song? I would like to know what she's saying. What? Why aren't you telling us anything? I bet a thousand dollars that it's some real nasty normie stuff like sex and social interaction. I understand now. Melly's naughty, right? It's always the quiet ones. What? What is she saying? Please do not tell them. Dot dot dot. It's a song by Da Hakat called Go to Town. Why are you encouraging her? Mammon are you almost there? He did. He's carrying Melly over his shoulder while she is texting. I can't unsee what I just saw. Did you see the lyrics? Yes. And I'm not surprised. What? You're not surprised? How much did Asmo tell you? Well, Asmo said something about it being the Birds and Bees exclusive edition. Asmo. Do not taint our innocent brother with your foul foreplay and vocabulary. I can't promise anything. Beal needs to know a little something before he gets someone and can treat them right. And treating them right involves going down on them. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of people do, you know. Can we please change the subject? Hair pulling. Melissa did seem to admit that she liked that in the last video. The amnesic is online. Hey. Don't break the fourth wall. The amnesic is offline. Wow. Melly is a freak when she's drunk. She's feeling all on Mammon's butt. Stop her. I bet that idiot likes it, too. He still won't admit that he doesn't hate Mel. What a total tsundera. Yeah, did you see how quick he put down his whole strike sign just when Lucifer threatened him? What a joke. So you're just going to talk about me behind my back when you're right next to me. Are you texting while you're carrying Mel? No, I threw that sexual assaulter on the ground. She started reaching from my crown jewels. Whoa, she's bold, huh? I'm hot and ready. What? Pizza. I'm hungry. We just had dinner. A midnight snack wouldn't hurt. 
I'm going. Beelzebub is offline. And he's gone just like that. SMH. Savage. Mammon, pick up Melissa and get her home. Fine, fine. But, I better be paid for working off duty. Mammon kicked in Melissa's bedroom door, wobbling in with the drunk girl squirming over his shoulder. Melissa was whining as she complained that the rope bounding her hands behind her back was uncomfortable. Mammon had tied her up after her hands made their way in his pants. Ow, you're hurting me. She whimpered as he stumbled to her bed and threw her on it. Oh, shut up. You've complained all the way here, and I'm tired of it. Mammon said, jabbing a finger at her. Would it kill you to just shut up for one minute? He stared down at the intoxicated human girl, noticing she kept her face buried in the fluffy blanket that dressed her bed. He saw her shaking slightly, and he grew a bit concerned. Before he could say anything, Melissa peeked up at him through her curly hair, tears welling up in her eyes. The sight of her in this fragile state made Mammon flinch, and his heart skipped a beat. Huh? W what's wrong with you, human? You're mean. I don't like it when you be mean to me. Just love me, Mammy. Mammon's face went red as she rolled on her back, her little pink dress allowing him to see her cleavage. He quickly averted his eyes, covering his mouth from what he just witnessed. Are you going to punish me with my hands behind my back? She asked as she extended her leg up and aimed to caress his chest. Mammon flinched, grabbing her ankle, causing her to moan. And what do you think you're doing? Mammon jumped and pushed Melissa's leg to the side once he heard Lucifer's voice at the door. He turned around to see most of his brothers watching him with this disapproving glint in their eyes. I I didn't do anything. Mammon shouted, putting his hands behind his back instinctively as if he was caught about to steal something. Lucifer let out a sigh and moved over to the bed where Melissa was squirming around, trying to sit up on her knees with her hands still bound together. He untied her, and once she was free, Melissa tried to get out of bed. Calm yourself. Lucifer said, grabbing her shoulders and sitting her back on the bed. She then held his hand, making him pet her hair. The older brother stared down at her strangely, unsure of what she was trying to do. I like pets from my master. Melissa mumbled. Asmodeus giggled in delight while Satan and Mammon were a bit disturbed by the whole interaction. Good for you. Now, Asmo, please help her get ready for bed. And Satan. Oh. Satan hummed, looking over to the raven-haired brother. Now that I know Mammon and Melissa are no way compatible, and Asmo will only have her in this state most of the time. Uh -huh. Hey. I have you know that Melly Bean had a great time with me. Asmodeus protested, hugging Melissa, who agreed with him. She then began to sing the song she was singing earlier, letting Asmo hype her up by dancing with her. Lucifer quickly stopped the two, letting out a sigh when Asmo claimed he was no fun. You're already looking after Solomon, so no. Lucifer said, shaking his head. Leviathan could care less about her and Beelzebub, well, would just eat her. So, that only leaves you, Satan. You two have been getting along lately. So until Mammon could get his act together, I leave you in charge of her. Satan shrugged his shoulders, trying to act nonchalant about what he was told. But, on the inside, he was happy that he was given this responsibility. Why do you want me to look after this pathetic human so bad? I hate her guts. Mammon shouted, jabbing his finger at Melissa. This caused Melissa to lean forward and bite his finger, making him jump back and snatch his hand away. Ah! You bit me, you drunk little. Mammon. Lucifer gestured for him to get out of the room. Mammon huffed and stormed out, holding his hand. That dumb human. 
Why don't she just leave and go back to her own world? Well, if she did that, then my plans with her would be ruined. Mammon turned around and realized Leviathan was leaning against the wall in some dramatic pose. He looked over at Mammon through his purple hair, giving him a sly smile. What the hell is up with you? Oh, don't worry about it, Mammon. I will have my revenge, soon. Real soon. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Mammon stared at Leviathan as he walked down the hall backwards, keeping his eyes locked on the second brother. Mammon then shook his head and made his way to his room, brushing off whatever nonsense Leviathan was talking about. Thank you for watching. And let me know if you like these long videos. Or if you like the typical short Obey Me lyric and texting videos. Or maybe you would like these long videos occasionally. Just let me know. Peep ya later.